It's just funny. The whole visual is funny. And I just enjoyed it so much. I believe it. Peter Gammons is, is as good as it's ever been. And so so if, if he's writing it, I totally believe it happened. And they're not just sort of putting this thing on to make a funny story. And it goes without saying, obviously, Ichiro was not raised in this country. So maybe he isn't a particular fan of, well, obviously, he isn't a particular fan of American football. But still, to not have any idea who I, Tom Brady is, having lived here for as long as he has, I couldn't believe it. Because You know why? Because we all lived in our self-absorbed little bubbles where we assume everyone knows everything we know and they better or what's wrong with them. I love the idea that he was like, who the F is Tom Brady? Like, that's the funniest thing I've read in a long time. As somebody that was never considered a superstar athlete, this should be a wake-up call to every person in entertainment and in sports that unless you're an all-time great, people really only care about maybe 10 people. But he is an all-time great. But he is an all-time great. He still didn't know. I know, but I'm just saying, like, away from, like, if you people that aren't athletes don't always follow sports. Ichiro, if we throw him out, he's just unique because he plays in a sport. But we assume that everybody follows sports. Exactly. Because we do. And they don't. Like, everybody's not sitting up watching but football. But I perceive Tom Brady basketball. to be incredibly famous. I mean, breakthrough normal sports stuff Famous. I will say this. My mom knows who he is, and she's very Italian and very not interested in most of this, but she very much knows who she How many football players would she know? It, 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 would she know a, a picture of him? If you showed her a photo and she no would, name oh, attached. She calls him the cutie one, and yeah. that's the only one she would <laughs> so know. So does my wife, unfortunately, like a, like 100%. which is a whole other <laughs> conversation for that's another it. That's time. That's the only one she knows. So Ichiro's uh, focused on his craft. Don't you think Ichiro knows who LeBron is, though? Yes. I do, too. It, it's an interesting little juxtaposition really? there. Like, I, I wonder would, why I, I, what I, the thing is. Because well, just, basketball players are more famous than football players. They are. I, again, I thought Tom Brady would have been the one guy that might have sort of broken through that. At least in the case of Ichiro. I love the I would have been wrong. Now, there are some NFL stories I wanted to just dabble in here a little bit this morning. And one of them involves Ezekiel Elliott. So Jerry Jones says that... Uh, Elliot's performance this season should improve significantly without having the specter of a potential suspension hanging over his head. Jones said, quote, from the standpoint of mentally, there's no question, I'm 100% sure, to not have that on your mind, to not have the ambiguity of not knowing timelines, those kinds of things, there's no doubt in my mind it'll make a significant difference on how he can focus, how he can focus not only on the next practice, but the next game and the entire season. Hmm. That seems logical to me. Yeah. There are a lot of changes in Dallas, obviously. No more what? Jason Witten, no more Des Bryant. What, what do we expect from Ezekiel Elliott? Basically, we're just talking about a level of focus and discipline. When you look at Ezekiel Elliott, since he left Ohio State up until now, he's put himself in multiple positions away from the football field that allow, have allowed people to question his character, his decision-making, and his behavior. So when these type of things happen, it does take away from your performance out on the field. And also, he got suspended for six games last year. And instead of initially accepting the suspension at the beginning of the year, he allowed it to hang over the team by continuing to fight it, continuing to fight it. It was a when long inevitably, time. inevitably, everybody knew he was going to get suspended, which ultimately ended up creating almost a lost season for the Dallas Cowboys. Look, the before and after numbers of the suspension are virtually the same. They're not that big a difference. And I think, yeah, I, I don't even think the suspension is the big part. I think it's the mental leading in because you're wondering what's going to drop, what's going to be, you know, they just want 2016 guy back, and that's all they want. And I don't know if you get that guy back necessarily. And you're right about the idea that he's the one that puts himself in these situations. That's what you need to look out for. I'm not worried about on the field. Just make sure off the field you make the right choice. I know they fought it like crazy. I know that the Jerry Jones thought that it was an unjust suspension, but you would hope, to the point that you made earlier, that he would take all of this as a wake-up call and realize there's a lot of people counting on me. There is an obligation to behave a certain way if you want to be a part of what he has an opportunity to be a part of. Uh, and I would hope that what happened last year would be a wake-up call to at least some degree. There's ever been a punishment that Jerry Jones thought was a just punishment uh, for a player? No. Okay, I just want to make sure. And certainly not one involving the Cowboys. Yeah. So. <laughs> he didn't seem so upset about Tom Brady and Deflate. <laughs> um, according to CG Sportsbooks, the Cleveland Browns are favored in two games this Yay! coming season. All right, Cleveland. Yeah. Congratulations, Cleveland. Good job, guys. I'm going to ask it. you to stop. Okay. One of them is against the Jets. Oh. No. <laughs> They play, they really? play, yes, they play a Thursday <laughs> night game. It's week three. It's September 20th. Oh, right off the game. Uh, and they are a two-and-a-half-point favorite <laughs> against the Jets, and then they're a one-point favorite against the Bengals on December 23rd. <laughs> For the record, uh, you probably know this, but the Browns are 1-31 in the last two seasons, including 0-16. I bet you oh, we're doing I'm this. putting this on wax right now. Right That's going to be the first game Sam Darnold starts.
No way. Which one? The game Thursday three? Thursday night, week three? Yes. What would wow. you like to bet? <laughs> watch. What, a, 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 I, a watch? I, I, I'm sitting right here. Let's no, make I'm a wager. Saying, no, not no, a no I'll take the watch bet. <laughs> no, no, Too late. No, I already no, said it. No, I, was saying, I know which one I, I want. I was saying, don't right. believe me, just watch. No, no. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, I'd like to work out the Are stakes on this one, for sure. All right, I want to also remind you about ESPN's Draft Academy. It's an eight-part documentary. It's a personal behind-the-scenes look into the lives of quarterbacks like Sam Darnold and Josh Allen, plus Minka Fitzpatrick and Shaquem Griffin. There are eight episodes. They're all available right now on ESPN+, Plus, and they're streaming exclusively on the ESPN app. Start your free trial of ESPN+, Plus today. All right, coming up, the Celtics advance to the East Final by winning all the close games. So, what made the difference when it mattered the most for Boston? We'll take a close look next. Thanks for getting up with ESPN. Ready. Real smooth.